All right, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, see the attendees rising, so a lot of people are logging on right now. Uh, and I'll turn it over to Mr. Aaron King to kick it off. All right, good afternoon. Welcome to our presentation uh, on Connected Learners. I'm Aaron King, and I'm going to um, introduce you to a few folks. And we're going to talk a little bit about this afternoon about Connected Learners and how to meet the needs of um, modern the modern workforce learning. Um, and I will give it back to Andre, who will talk a little bit about uh, DLT. Yes, so both Blackboard and DLT have been partnered together in the public sector uh, for over four years. Um, they bring the Blackboard solution to the market for our valued customers uh, and a lot more. Uh, the benefit that you get from working with DLT uh, is, is the fact that you'll be able to have extensive contract access, a wide range of employees to help you out, a strategic tech domain alignment to help you with your solutions and market leadership to make sure that all your needs are met and we're purpose built. So we have the infrastructure built within DLT to help accelerate your your all of your quotes and anything else that you would need from us. And we've been in the business since 1991. So I do believe that we're one of the best in the business at doing what we do. Outstanding. Thank you, Andre. So the question becomes, who is the connected learner? And this is a very interesting thing to think about because when we think about connected learners, the correct answer is it, it's everyone. It's every adult learner who's working in the government space. Who They may be military. They may work for in the federal government. They may work in local government. They may be uh, an employee in a corporation. And you know, servicemen and, and women who are workforce learners, these are the people that are making you know, the, the world run on a daily basis. And we ask ourselves, what do connected learners want? And now more than ever, it's extraordinarily important that we be connected in terms of our technology, in terms of our infrastructure, in terms of dynamic training, even though we all may be working from home. And in fact, that might actually become the new norm for all of us moving forward that we need to have integration. We need to have real-time collaboration. And some of us are still, you know, are, have to work on not only training and passing of institutional knowledge, but we also need to think about, you know, secession planning. We also need to think about our own individual uh, development. So these are some things to, to, to consider when you're, when you're talking about connected learning. So what is work, workforce learning? And workforce learning are the, the activities that are involved in this training or passing of knowledge or just in doing what we do, you know, in our normal jobs and roles and responsibilities. And this is broken down into three uh, key elements, which is knowledge, skills, and abilities. And again, we, we, you know, we focus on that professional development, that career advancement, you know, skills transfer, uh, institutional knowledge, all of those things are important. And then having the right techn technology infrastructure that works you know, when we need it to work is also a crucial part of that. Now, why is connectivity important? And connectivity is important because, as I mentioned earlier, all of us are working from home right now or in some form or fashion remotely, and that may continue to be our new normal. So in that, we need to be able to collaborate. You know, it's very isolating when you're working at home and you need to connect to the people and the resources that are required of doing your daily job. Also, we have to think about accessibility. You know, there's millions of uh, Americans that, that have uh, uh, dis disabilities when it comes to learning, or maybe just uh, mo mobility disabilities and hidden disabilities. So these are all things that we need to consider when we're working remotely and being connected to our technology infrastructure. We also need that support and we need integration. These are all key aspects. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to uh, hand it over to uh, Khadijah Brown, and she's gonna talk to us a little bit about how connected learning works in the real world, in real world applications. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Khadijah Brown at the States Fair. I am the lead instructional designer and um, Blackboard admin. I also admin uh, Genius SIS. Um, for the USDA's National Training and Development Center out in Fredericksburg, Virginia. 
So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the state of uh, the training center when I came into here. So we have basically a nationwide learner base. So if you think about it, all um, uh, USDA inspectors across the nation, we have different time zones that we're dealing with. So we have our West Coast guys, East Coast wise, and that, uh, East Coast guys in our central region, of course. Um, a huge percentage of that are non-government industry folks. So, but these are guys that are still having to meet the requirements of, of USDA and um, have that same standard of training. So these are employees who are not linked pass or you can think about it as a cat card or anything that you need to have certifications to have. So they are not those type of card holders. So in order to go through this process, you have to go through about six to eight months of waiting to even get those type of credentials. Um, so. So we wanted to get out of this practice of bringing 400 people into the DC area, if you can imagine that, that mass gaggle, that, that would happen. Um, bringing 400 folks in at a, at a time for a three to four day workshop. Not, not only are we talking about bringing them into the DC area that is totally congested, but we're also talking about inflated pricing on uh, uh, hotels and things like that as well. So we're flying them into DC and staying for a week. So these are some of the issues that we, we were looking at. Um, so the fix to that is definitely going to this, the distance learning world. And, and it, it, it was a little bit of a hurdle to get over because when you think about it, um, you're talking about field workers who are not necessarily in an office sitting down to a computer all day. So this is definitely a, a climate change for them. So we are now dealing with the ability to have 24 hour access to a system where if we're conducting training or we have specialized training um, that we can record on Collaborate or something like that, we can touch our Western region folks along with our central region and our Eastern region folks without having to um, try to get somebody coming in at four o'clock in the morning on the West Coast because we're trying to do early training on the East Coast. So again, we're not having the issues of accessibility for our industry partners. And that was a big thing for us because we have areas that are, are, are huge in agriculture like Georgia and um, of course, California, Florida, and some of those areas where it, the, the, the user base is heavily non-government employees. So we don't have to worry about them having to wait that long period of time. Um, and even for our seasonal folks to get these government credentials that they're never gonna use for anything else. So we have the, the, the accessibility for the system. Uh, to, to allow them to take the training, get the certifications that they need and to get back out in the field and do um, the things that they've been trained on. Um, using uh, this system has definitely saved, saved us a lot of money. Again, when we start thinking about taking that group of folks and taking them anywhere, I say DC is one example, but New York was another case, bringing them into the markets there, um, taking them out to California, we're still dealing with an influx of um, of cost there to bring everybody in to stay in hotels, um, to hold a conference that conference that's going to host that many people. So uh, when we're, I put two things in there um, because we have the cost savings, but we also have revenue generators now because we're we're uh, we're able to have that e-commerce tool in Genius SIS that um, we can deliver more training now and offer different type of training um, on on the online platform. So the good thing about um, our, our floor planning um, before this whole pandemic was we were already planning uh, with our folks and kind of just letting them know, and for, for lack of a better term, that train's coming. You know, distance learning is where it's at. And um, we have guys who are not locked down to a computer at, at their desk, and we have to be able to supply and give them access to this training in their own environment. So we had already been getting them in a mindset. So boom, we hit this pandemic. And so our folks were already, you know, kind of, we were already starting the, the, the wheels to go in with getting everybody prepared to our new normal um, of, of having to use this database. And so I, I will tell you, it, it, I, I see it as such a successful um, 
uh, program. Uh, we had planning in place um, before the pandemic that kind of moved us easier into it. But we also dealt, have dealt with other agencies who had not planned on going to the full-time online uh, world. And, and once we got them um, on the ground running, we've, we've stood up units in uh, three days, four days time and actually have them running a, success, a successful uh, program. So um, I don't want to take up too much time, but I definitely wanna, wanted to talk about some of those aspects of taking a, a total culture that had no idea about this world that was uh, uh, Blackboard Learn and to bring them to where we are now, where we have over 5,000 um, I want to say it was 5,700 and something folks when I look last um, in the system, actively in the system, conducting training. And, and again, if you think about it, these are our industry and our USDA government partners who are in the system doing training and getting certified. So we are very excited about um, the use that we have of the program because we're using it to the max at this time. So that was another thing that kind of pushed us with the pandemic. There were some aspects that we weren't using that we're definitely using now. So we're using the system to its fullest capacity and we are we are completely um, excited about what we're doing in the system. So with that, I'll hand it off to um, the infamous David Palmer um, until you guys have questions. Thanks, Khadija. Yes. So uh, thanks everybody, this is David Palmer with Blackboard. Uh, thank you for that uh, great uh, commentary and presentation there, Khadija. It's great to hear from our customers and how they're using our technology in the real world to, to do a lot of these things. So I have about um, 13 years of experience working in this field. I work with uh, the military exclusively and some of our Intel clients and it, we get to really do the fun part of helping customers solve problems as it relates to technology and really recreating classroom-based learning events in an online format. So Blackboard has been doing this for many years. Uh, it wasn't until this year when we, we really um, got a large momentum around this because of everything that's happening with uh, COVID-19 and the pandemic and the virtual world that we're all working inside of today. So. Today, we're gonna to talk to you about a number of different tools that our customers use to really support the connected learner and the, you know, the, the 365 days a year, constant workplace and training environments that, that Blackboard is, is doing so much to help these customers in these things. So we're gonna to talk to you about um, the LMS and learning management platform around how to manage courses and content online. We're gonna discuss how to leverage real-time virtual classrooms in Blackboard Collaborate. And then we're gonna to talk to you a little bit about the different layers and reporting and tracking that happens around these things. But you can see all these technologies really come together to tell a very good story around not just parts and pieces to help with various requirements, but really a complete picture around how do you create a true connected learner experience for your programs and what you guys are trying to do and the mission you're trying to solve around um, a, a, a true full-time workplace that's that's always online and always virtual. <clears throat> I want to also preface, you know, we've been on a multi-year um, transformation as a company the last three to four years. For those of you who've been using Blackboard for you know 10, 15 years, um, you, you, you're seeing that transformation happen now. And the, the biggest part of this for our federal customers is the multi-year investment that we've made in a security certification called FedRAMP. So FedRAMP, for those of you who don't know what it is, is a cloud authorization and a cloud certification process that was started by um, the Office of Management and Budget by the president. And it is essentially a place that SaaS companies and cloud infrastructure companies can go to get their products certified by this program so that agencies in the government can leverage our technology or others' technology that have been vetted and approved by the FedRAMP program. It is a um, multi-year investment. It is a, uh, a large capital investment for the company and then it will give you confidence in knowing that you can use a product that has been approved and has an active authority to operate by our agency sponsors in the military 
to use our software. So I just want to point this out because I think it's very important to understand this. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about the fun stuff. So we are a, um, a an educational technology company. We manufacture a product that helps to recreate these environments online. And what we're gonna talk to you today about is really the, how to do that. How do you do that inside of Blackboard? So in our interface that has been approved and certified by FedRAMP, you have a very modern personalized interface to stand up courses, to manage courses online, to create these environments instantaneously for what you guys are trying to do. So this is where our customers go to conduct test assessments, um, cr create breakout groups, discussion boards, an interactive calendar, check grades and results, and everything that's done here is gonna have that experience across all these different devices, and we'll get into that in a second. But this, the biggest change here is really gonna be that um, how, how students access that data. Now, we build our products and our applications with a mobile first mentality to it. So what does that mean? That means students, no matter what device they're accessing Blackboard from, will have the same experience on a mobile device as they would at a computer. So this is going to give you a true connected experience. It's going to allow your users to have that consistent experience. And really, when you talk about staying connected, this is the way that it's done, because today, in universities and in other places, we all use our mobile phones first to access everything. So a lot of these customers that we work with have users who are uh, traveling, who may be um, not on base, who may be wherever they are in the world, and they can stay connected and do those things from a mobile aspect. <clears throat> The other thing is uh, that's important to understand is inside of these courses, inside of Blackboard, you can launch these real-time virtual classrooms in a product called Blackboard Collaborate. So the same mobile-first design aspects come into play here, being able to connect with instructors, connect with peers inside of a course, having breakout groups to do these things, live polling, interactive whiteboard. Um, it leverages a technology called WebRTC, which gives you a very high definition video and audio experience to, to stay connected in these things. So Collaborate's gonna allow users to do this, has a deep integration with the LMS. So these, these sessions can be launched from right inside of a course. No need to put in a link to another session or have a user re-authenticate into a different platform. Anything that happens inside of Collaborate can be tracked, managed, and reported back into the LMS. So from a user experience perspective, it's very easy uh, to get into these courses, to have that same experience from Blackboard Learn to Blackboard Collaborate, and it's just a much different, easier, simpler way to get around inside of the course environment to keep students engaged and to keep them connected in what they're doing. The last piece around content and in the um, in the LMS itself, you know, one of the big big things that we see so much in in the government is is, and it's not just because they're trying to do this; it's a, it's actually a law. And if you all know about 508 compliance, creating online course environments are great, but if they're not accessible for people with disabilities or being hearing impaired or visually impaired. Um, you, you're not doing anything to help yourself or your organization. So Blackboard helps with this by providing a technology called Blackboard Ally, and that's really what it is. It's, it's designed to be a partner to your instructional designers and the people that build courses. So through machine learning algorithms and um, adaptive learning, this application will actually read and assess the content that's in your environments and not just flag you around a piece of content that may be, not be accessible or hard to hear or hard to read from, from someone from those types of disabilities, but it's actually gonna make those recommendations too on how to make it more accessible. So it's a great revolutionary product for Blackboard. It's done a lot to really transform how people build online environments. But the other big thing that the military has really honed in on with this product is the ability to create these alternative formats on the fly. So Ally will tell you this product or this piece of content isn't accessible for somebody with um, who may be visually impaired. It's gonna make a recommendation on how to make them more accessible. And then it's also gonna give you in the background automatically generated 
alternative formats that you can use. So a lot of our customers that use this tool will find that very beneficial because they can create those alternative formats right on the fly through machine learning algorithms. And it's something that's been really powerful in some of these environments, especially with the push to become more virtual and doing more um, online. <clears throat> Outstanding. Thank you for uh, sharing that with us, David. So um, we're going to move forward into and, and dive a little deeper into the demonstration and discuss and uh, take a look at all of the things that uh, David just previously mentioned. So I am Aaron King. I'm a solutions engineer here at Blackboard. Um, if I had to pretty much say anything about myself, I would say that e-learning and adult learning are my jams. This is, this is what I do, this is what I love. And as a person who is a disabled vet, uh, having a high level of connectivity uh, resonates with me and is extraordinarily important in my life and has been very helpful in my learning journey as an adult. So I'm gonna take a few seconds, we're gonna do a little transition over to the demonstration. So please bear with me. And we're gonna take a look at Blackboard in action. So what we just landed in, this is our, our uh, Blackboard Learn instance, and this is the ultra experience. When I come in as a learner, I, would, I can land in a couple of places. I have an institutional page where I can look at um, and brand this in any way I want. Now, why this is important is because I may have a few separate organizations or separate learner groups that I am working with with one instance of Blackboard. So as you see here, I can change this branding and this landing page to appear any way I want and also segregate my learners and courses and instructors in a way that you know, with one instance, I can manage all these different groups. And why that's important is that sometimes we don't want um, certain groups of learners or instructors or even, uh, you know, may, maybe course developers to have access to other content. So let's take a look over here in our left-hand uh, navigation panel. And some of the most important things here our, uh, our activity stream and our courses, but let's first take look, a look at activity stream. And the activity stream is important because here is when I, when, when I come in as either an instructor or a learner, I have access to content that's most important. I can take a quick glance at what, you know, what I need to complete, what might have been uh, recently assigned or what's due today. That is a great way to do a snapshot on where your learning is at as a learner. And it adds a, le a level of personalization because every learner is going to see a different view when they come into the stream based off of what their learning paths are. The second thing that we need to take a look here is our course cards. And here in the courses, this is a display of all of the courses and we can display it with these you know, very nice course cards or we can have more of a traditional you know, uh, uh, horizontal approach. And it depends on what that learner's interests are and you know what kind of learner they are. But David mentioned a couple of things uh, early on about uh, you know web responsiveness, right? When we designed the uh, Blackboard Learn Ultra experience, it was about the UX UI, you know, user uh, user interface, user experience, and you know having that mobile responsive uh, type of format makes all the difference for learners because we want the experience to be seamless. So as you see, as I drag this, it's responsive. And as the smaller I make it, you notice that this is what it would look like if I was on a uh, iPhone or a uh, Android phone or a mobile device. And again, we wanna have this experience to be seamless across the board for all learners, because when we're learning from uh, a distance, we wanna be able to have access and have that same you know, learner-centric experience for everyone. So another thing I want to point out when I go back to the courses board, you may notice here at the bottom, I have a help, uh, a question mark. When I click on the question mark, what it does is that it opens up different types of support. So here I have a, su a support for easy support, but I can set that up for pretty much anything I'd like. But I also have access you know, here to a couple of things. Um, if I want to jump into some course content, let's just say I'm a, a new learner and I've been tasked with taking this effective communication skills course. When I open that up, I have a very clean and user-friendly uh, experience, uh, which is divided in threes. 
I have my details and actions panel, I have my course content panel, and up at the top, I have quick launches. And let's take a look while I'm up here at the quick launch panel. We have you know, our content, we have our calendar, which is uh, really important for important dates, but we also have discussion. So if there's a discussion tied to a particular piece of content or a particular aspect of the course, I can jump right into that. I also can look at my grades and participation in that particular discussion. So when David talked about analytics, I can quickly, as a learner, see you know, where I'm at in terms of my learning. Um, and if I go back up here to my panel, I have access to my grade book. And I want you to keep in mind that, in, and, and I don't wanna you know, feed you, uh, have you drink from the fire hose, so we're gonna kind of be really quick with some of this stuff, but this is just you know an example of the grade book. And I have two different views of here in my grade book where I can keep track of what's going on. I get a really quick snapshot of who's in my course, what they're doing, and then across the top, I can see, well, who has submitted what and when and, and things if they need to be graded, which is important because as an instructor, you need to know, you know what's going on with, with your learners so that you can put in the proper interventions. Now, I also have the ability to download this as an uh, uh, Excel spreadsheet and uh, create a report as a CSV file. The final thing outside of email here is that we have question analytics. And why question analytics are important? Because if I'm creating assessments to check learning inside of, uh, inside of Learn, I want to be able to know if my questions are hitting you know, the right mark. And are they aligned to my learning objectives, and do they make sense for the learners? So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this, uh, this course analytics. And here is a, a, a quick example of a dashboard that's telling me, you know, based off of question one, and it tells me the question type, um, what was the level of difficulty, how many people attempted it. And this is another great way to manage your learners and manage the questions that are involved because sometimes when we create uh, courses, it may not be for maybe six months until we uh, evaluate this. This allows you as an instructor to evaluate the course content in real time and see if it, it aligns. Now, a couple other things I want to mention, and we'll go back to this. And um, before I go into this course content panel, I want to let you know that I am viewing this as an administrator. And how I know is the difference is because I have the ability to create content. So if I wanted to quickly create some content, I would click on the plus sign and I'd hit create, and it would give me a bunch of options on what type of content to create. So whether you wanted to uh, do a folder, a document, a deep link, if you have a LTI connection, which is a learning tools interoperability, and I'll show you a real-time example of something of that nature. We also can do SCORM packages, and I can break this down to have it graded and down to the individual SCO, um, and also uh, the ability to set up discussions, journals, and tests. So let's take a, a look at tests because that's a, a really important aspect of our learning. So to create a test, I can simply click the plus sign. And that what happens here is I'm introduced to a whole uh, a myriad of options where I can create, you know, pull from a question pool, I can pull uh, calculated formula questions, essay questions, fill in the blank matching, multiple choice, and all of the usual question types, as well as reuse questions from other courses or even pull courses, uh, I mean, questions from uh, courses that I may have delivered before or things that I have in my cloud storage. So again, another quick quick and easy way to uh, create learning and, and learning objects. So let's take a look at what this course content is about and look at it from the perspective of a learner. So to do that, I would simply click on the student preview and it's gonna allow me to take the experience of the learner. Now, as the learner, you'll see that I don't have those same options, a couple of things have changed, but I still have this really uh, streamlined um, uh, experience in the middle. So if I wanna click on this and I say, well, let's go ahead and begin here. Let's take a look at some content types. So when I open this, I have some different content types here. I have some images, I have some text. Here I have a podcast where we can play audio. Um, if I wanted to be able to download this as a learner, I can download this original file and make it more portable. Maybe I don't have time to listen to this, so I want to download it to my mobile device or my computer. I also, we can also watch videos. So if I wanted to play a video, we can watch a video here. 
I mean, and then, you know, some more content types as well. Now, David spoke a little bit to the fact of, as a learner, accessibility is extraordinarily important. And why it's so important is that, again, you know, uh, I think the statistics are that 90.99.8 uh, folks in the workplace don't admit that they have a hidden disability. And, but, you know, as uh, he mentioned that, you know, 508 compliance, the 508 ADA Act is, um, you know, it's the law. So we have this, you see, notice that we have this A here. And what that means is that the learner has a, a option to look at alternative formats. Now, this is a typical PDF document that we can make downloadable for our learners. But if we click on the A, we get a pop-up and that shows us alternative formats. We can do HTML5 for mobile device, I mean, HTML for mobile devices, EPUBs for ebook readers, electronic braille, we can use uh, audio for uh, MP3s for listening, uh, Beeline readers, which is a really popular uh, reading tool for those who are, have challenges reading and dyslexia. We also have tr a translated version. And in the translated version, right um, out of the box, we have over 50 language translations. So maybe the learner is English isn't in their, is their first language or they're not as comfortable. And they can simply download this content and have the same experience as every other learner that's in your uh, course. So let's take a look at a couple of other course content types. So here is an example of uh, a pre a pre check. So this is how we would do an assessment, and we enter it in. We have a timer, and again, you know, some simple questions. We can set this up, um, and you notice here in the details and information. This assessment may have a due date. We may add a time limit as an instructor. And we can also tie this to goals and standards. Why this is important is because some of the uh, courses that you may be teaching may be tied to regular uh, regulatory bodies or accrediting bodies that require that these, you know, all of the assessments are, are aligned to sp specific goals and things that need to be measured, like as a, uh, for example, a rubric. So we can see what's tied to this. And, and if we need to, as an instructors, we can set up goals and standards in a different aspect of learn. So I, as a learner, I would submit this. And then this would uh, immediately give me back my grade. And now as a learner, I know where I'm at. And this is also recorded in the grade book. Now, another type of content, I mentioned SCORM. And here is an example of a SCORM package. So if you're using SCORM as a way to deliver content, Let's go ahead and launch this course. Here's an example of a SCORM package. And you know, I may have all of my interactions built in the SCORM. And for the learners, I may do an assessment. And if, if it's set up, we can have this grade uh, for this assessment passed back to the grade book in, uh, in Learn. Now, uh, for the last two things I wanna uh, briefly talk about is we have, I mentioned LTI integration. And LTI integration is learning tools interoperability, and it gives me the ability to build uh, using external third-party tools. For example, the tool that, uh, that we're getting ready to show here is a uh, tool called H5P, and this is an example of an interactive video. So I may have some interactive video content, and let's just move this along. I'll give you an example of uh, an interactive video. So the video would play, and then as the learner, I would do a knowledge check, and this does two things. One, it breaks up the cognitive load for our learners, but two, it, it gives them uh, an opportunity to interact with the content in a different way. And, and if I wanted to add a third piece to this, as an instructor, this almost assures that the learner watches the whole video or most of the video or understands the content that's being presented. And I think in a lot of ways, that's um, very crucial to the learning because we all know you know, sometimes learners speed through the content. The final aspect of that would be uh, being able to connect to third party tools. And this is an example of uh, LinkedIn learning, but you may be using things like Vado or Skillsoft or things uh, might have come from McGraw Hill, Cengage, or any other third party vendor, but you do have the ability to integrate that into the Learn platform. So again, that speaks to being connected in that space. So the final thing I want to show you in terms of connectivity is that as a, uh, uh, a connected learner, as a le learner in your, in your workforce, 
I can jump into a collaborate session without having to download a link, connect and, and connect to a different system. I can simply go here to the Blackboard Collaborate Join Session button. I click on the course button. And what this is gonna do is it'll open up a session for me in Collaborate. And for example, this is an empty session. And I'm gonna show you what this looks like from behind the scenes. But as a learner, I could use this for a couple of things. Well, one, maybe the instructor is doing a live uh, virtual session or part of the course, and I'm expected to be there every Wednesday from one to two, or maybe this is a room that the, the learners are, are set up for learners to, where they can go inside and do some type of uh, discussion or work on projects together. So let's take a look at this from the perspective of an instructor. So if I exit my preview, and we're going to go back here, and you're going to notice some differences here. So as my panel expanded, I have these uh, ellipses here. And when I open that up, I have the option to get the course link, and I can add this link inside of my course, inside of my course content. Or I could just leave it here and, get, and point instructions to when to click you know, and, and choose a session. But I also can edit my, my course settings room. So we're going to go there and look at it from uh, another uh, angle. Now, in my session, you notice here at the top that it's tied to the effective communications. What that means is that we spoke to connected learning being about security and integration. This course and this instance of Collaborate is tied to that particular instance of that course. So learners, even if we stood up this course at another time, it would not have that connection. This is uh, these are two are tied together and why that's important is because of security we're all familiar with the infamous zoom bombing and all of those things and and we we understand that so having that level of security integration um you know that was one of our prime objectives here so to set this up i would click, quickly create a course i'd give it a, a test name a name or whatever and then if i look at my panel what where the magic happens here is that i have the ability to set up my parameters in terms of allowing recording, the chat, I can have audio play, I can share video, um, and I can you know, have all the functionality that I wanna either give my learners permission to, to use or not. Also have the ability to do attendance reporting. Why this is, is great is because I can report back into the, uh, into the LMS, into my gradebook, and set these parameters if, if my learner's late, if they're absent, or how much time they need to spend in the course. So let me go ahead and uh, come out of here, and I'm going to show you what it looks like from the perspective of being the instructor. So I'm going to join the session, and now I would join the session as the instructor is where I have more controls, and you can get a sneak peek behind the scenes. So as you see, I have the ability here as the moderator uh, to to you know use the feedback tools, and these feedback tools are really great for uh, doing some of the live things that you would do in your classroom. I have access to my microphone. We also have the raise your hand um, uh, uh, functionality here, which is great for when learners are asking questions here in my chat panel. So, and, and then we also can separate this from learners in the chat to moderators and send messages. And we have the ability to share different content types. So we could share a, a, white, uh, a whiteboard so we can write on the whiteboard if we wanted to do that and use that as part of the, the course. We can share our application screen, including whatever we have on the screen. We can share our Chrome tabs and add audio so we can play video live in these sessions. We also can share our cameras. So if I wanted to share my camera, let's say let's share this camera. So there would be me sharing my camera twice. If I go ahead and turn that off. Um, we also have the ability to share files. And you notice I have some files loaded up here. And this is great for the, from the aspect of teaching and learning because here I can open this up and launch this and we can do some real training. For example, uh, as a virtual facilitator, I always like to incorporate all of the tools. And at the top here, we have annotation tools. And what's great is that when you're presenting in Collaborate, it's, it's, it, it has a two tier screen. In the bottom screen that you can't really see it, it's your presentation layer. On the top layer, you actually have the ability to have the whiteboard and make it functional. So I would teach a piece of content, and so I would put something on the screen, and I would say, you know, uh, put a check mark or to actually type in your name to near the uh, flower that most you know resonates with you, and I'll say, 
Tom, John, and you see how this works. And this also engages the learners in terms of live interaction, and it doesn't become just a one-way conversation. You also have uh, the ability here to do a couple of other things that I want to share really quick. The ability to do polls. So if I wanted to launch a poll, and then we just, just to say, I'm just going to put in something here for a lack of time. Um, start that poll. And this poll is also recorded in the session. And again, you know, you could record these sessions. And once you have the recordings, you can use these recordings for different types of course content. And as David mentioned, also, we have the ability to do breakout rooms so I can separate my groups. Now, once I'm done with the session, I just close it here and I'm back. Now, the final thing I want to show before I um, end the demo is the ability to view content in terms of accessibility and the, the lift behind that. David talked about the AI and uh, the algorithms that are helping uh, you know, institutions become more 508 compliant. So every time you upload a piece of content, you get a, an accessibility check. And here, this it's gonna be a little difficult to see, but there's a, um, a gauge here that tells me that the, assess the accessibility score is a medium. And it's gonna, when I pop it open, it's actually gonna give me a legitimate score. So I know that this PowerPoint presentation that I uploaded is 49% uh, compliant. I need to be, have this at 100%. This is this is unacceptable. Now I may not know a lot about you know 508 um, compliance or WCAG 2.1 AAA standards, and those are which what this tool is built on. So if I want to know well what this is, it gives me a block of instructions on what that particular uh, uh, challenge is or in the missing description. It tells me how to add descriptions. And then once I fix this and I upload it, it'll give me a, a corrected accessibility score. Now this works really well for when you have content that is old legacy content. And we all have this, if you worked in a government agency, uh, there's that old PDF that's been around for a hundred years has been scanned several times and we don't know where that source document came from but i can upload a pdf or just a regular document and it'll what it'll do is it'll turn it to a um i can uh export it as a word document now i have a source document to fix and this is just an example of what a hundred percent score would look like and it'll give me that ability but uh, again if i had a pdf it gives me the ability to um recreate that PDF and now create a new source document. So that is going to conclude our demo of Learn. And let's go back to our presentation. And I am going to uh, hand it over to the lovely Stephanie Niner. Thank you, Aaron, for that wonderful demonstration and interactive um, look at Blackboard. Uh, I'm going to take it home here. My name is Stephanie Niner. I am a channel account manager. I work with DLT Solutions and Blackboard in our government market. Transition slides for me. There we go. So, having a trusted partner makes a difference. And with that, I want to take it home and talk a little bit about Blackboard. We understand the government market with our 20 years of commitment and expertise in online learning and training. And we continue to improve each and every day and revolutionize the learning experience for the learner. And you have seen this throughout the demonstration that Aaron provided, that David overviewed about Blackboard, and you heard from Khadijah Brown at USDA on how we're currently working with them. We have over 20 years of experience in this market, as well as a, the only LMS platform to have the government competency by AWS. We're also scalable, reliable, and flexible, and to meet any of the needs that you have. So, we, if you, if any of what has been said in this presentation today, resonates with you and where you are in your current learning journey, 
in your digital transformation or you had issues with operational continuity during the current recent events, you know, let us help you. Let us be your partner in change. And not if you're at the beginning of your roadmap or if you're in the middle or if you didn't have any problems moving all your courses online with the recent issues, we still have available resources for you that are out on our Blackboard website that are free resources to help you assist people with online instruction. We saw that a lot of what happened during the pandemic, instructors that were used to teaching in a classroom environment were now forced to go online and teach in an online environment. And those are two very different scenarios. So what Blackboard did was we put together a lot of free resources out there to help instructors with that transition into an online instruction environment. We also have certification classes for online instruction. Again, it's a very different world, regardless if you're on an LMS or you're doing online instruction with Blackboard or another LMS, these classes are still very relative, rele relevant to what you need to know and do in a teaching, teaching online. And again, whether you're in the beginning of your journey or you're in the middle of your journey or you're just looking at possible ways to improve where you are, we also have guidelines out on our website to help you, uh, one of which is Smart Steps to Online Learning. We have a roadmap that uh, actually Aaron, our own Aaron on the phone here, has developed to help you get through building an online learning experience. And again, you'll receive an email after the webinar with some contact information. Please reach out to a Blackboard specialist, schedule some time, talk about where you are in your journey, um, find out you know, if there's anything that Blackboard can do to assist you there. And then finally, we have a uh, virtual Blackboard world scheduled for July 21st to July 22nd. Register to attend that. You'll hear from peers in the government industry. Uh, you will hear from industry experts, uh, as well as gain some additional knowledge and uh, talk to our partner community about offerings that they have that integrate directly with our platform to enhance the learner experience. So with that, I hope to hear from you soon, and I hope you enjoyed today's presentation, and we'll open it up for questions at this time. Thank you. And uh, I know we got right into it, but uh, it's just a special thanks again to Aaron King, our Blackboard Solution Engineer, David Palmer, our Blackboard Account and Success Manager, Khadija Brown taking time out of her day um, from USDA, and of course, Stephanie Niner, who you just heard from, our Channel Director for all of US public sector and commercial. Um, we've got a few questions in the chat, so I'll ask those. If you have any other questions, please uh, feel free to send those through the chat function and I'll make sure they get answered. Um, and if you think of something afterwards, like I said, we, you will get an email with both a copy of this presentation and a link to register for the virtual Blackboard world. Um, so you can get back to us immediately. Our first question is, how long does it take to have the platform up? Hey, uh, I can answer that one. This is David Palmer. So I always tell folks, this is a very common question. The longest part of any new online instance with Blackboard is the contracting process. Um, we have many customers who, from the time they're contracted with us, are up and running in seven to 10 days and sometimes faster. It depends on where your content exists. It depends on if you have a, an, an online environment today. But from our perspective in the in the software as a service world, you know, sending you license keys and a place to authenticate in your system is something that's very fast. What we typically do with most of our clients is we spend a couple of days helping them um, to make that transition, to understand their goals and their needs, and then we'll train their um, their users up from an administrative perspective as well as some of their instructors. And from there, it's it it takes off uh, and, it, and it grows like crazy because once people in your institution find out that you have this capability more and more people want to put their courses and content online to make it a, a true connected experience so um it, it's 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 not a long process like i said the longest part is is the contracting piece 
Excellent answer. Um, another question, can you report, oh, can you create reports to meet the reporting requirement for our federal employees? Can you be a little more specific? So when you say federal employees, because that could be, that can range depending on what agency you work at. But to answer the question in totality, yes, we have a lot of functionality around reporting. In fact, that's um, one of the things that separates us from a lot of competitors is that we, you know, we need to be able to drill down on several things on completions, on, um, you know, not only completions, but co activities. Um, we can even pull reports on the accessibility across the board in all courses. We can do SCORM level analysis and report on that. We can even, you know, depending on how many different aspects of the of the total you know learn ecosystem or a blackboard ecosystem that you uh integrate into your existing systems we could report on things like um you know resource management for example if i was managing uh you know materials or rooms uh to to do live uh presentations or even how you know instructors or uh, how many learners, you know, in terms of learning paths and certificates. So uh, we could pretty much handle every reporting type that I, I don't think, and David, you could probably speak to this a little bit better than I could, but I don't think we've come across any reporting type that we couldn't uh, meet. That's amazing. Well, um, I, thanks for the robust answer. And the last question I think we'll have time for before we, we run out. Um, do you offer a help desk function or strategic services to support your clients? Yes, this is uh, this is David again. Yes, we do. We, we offer um, out of the box, um, all standard support is included with the software. We also have a division of Blackboard called Blackboard Student Services that really partners with organizations to outsource the student help desk piece around um, virtual tools like Blackboard. So we can actually help you guys to manage the help desk support for your students who are using Blackboard and other systems too. So we do a lot of that. And the strategic services are something that we do quite a bit of. Um, we have a we have an entire strategic uh, consulting division that'll actually come in and help you guys assess your current um, operation, come up with a strategy to help transform what you're doing, and then give you metrics and a detailed project plan on different stages and and gates to making that transition successful. So. We have a lot of different things. You know, I always tell people we can do anything from uh, offering you up a one hour online training course that's self paced to being on site with you full time and really helping you to make that transition. So there's many, many different um, offerings that, that Blackboard provides from a consulting uh, services perspective. And yeah, to expand on what David was saying, and this is Aaron, um, you know, it's not just about the technology for us at Blackboard. It's about the, you know, we're people, we're, Blackboard is the people who, you know, who work at Blackboard. And for us, you know, many of us come from the backgrounds that are similar to yours. And, you know, we're walking the walk and talking the talk. And for us, it's about, you know, teaching and learning and having those mechanisms in place. It's one thing to have the technology, but then to have the way to get there is, extraordinarily important and also we have to look through the lens of the learner are we putting the learner first in the way that we're delivering the content are we engaging the learner at the end is that has that knowledge been transferred and you know when you speak to support in the blackboard learn platform in the collaborate platform in uh the ally tool all of these things are connected in a way where if you need help you know and i want to phrase it as just in time training right and I'm stuck on a piece of content I'm trying to upload or I'm trying to figure this out, whether I'm a learner, an instructor or an administrator, there's a simple help function that brings you right to the help, uh, help at uh, help.blackboard.com. And if you have an opportunity to visit that, and let's see if we can drop that in the chat, that the even the ally functionality is built into our own help, uh, our help page. 
So not only will you get help on the piece that you're having difficulty in in that moment, but you can also use the accessibility function to view that in a different way if that's required. Yeah, and Aaron, I would expand on that and say from the learner experience level of that, as you mentioned, the just-in-time training, it's important that the learners have the ability to connect to that just-in-time training in this remote workforce and where we are in current events. Not People are not readily available to assist somebody, so having that that piece of content or that that snap shot of a tutorial available on their smartphone or their tablet if they're in the field to get the answers that they need to complete their job function um, on a day-to-day -day basis is important and that's part of that learner experience that just in time always available training aspect exactly that is the true definition of connected learning that is how learners stay connected in the digital space so phenomenal uh, example, Stephanie. Well, with that, I believe we are close to time. So I do want to thank everybody for attending. Um, I, I believe that this is very knowledgeable and, and thorough and well put together. And if you do have any follow-up questions, do not hesitate to reach out. You can add any of these speakers on LinkedIn as well, and we'll send you a follow-up email. And we look forward to working with you guys and supporting your agency's need in the very near future. Thanks again, and, and stay safe. Thanks for joining.